No, I thought early we actually uh, did a lot of good things defensively. Offensively, we struggled to make shots. I think that uh, took a little wind out of our sails. We got deflated with that. Uh, you know, it's kind of the three areas we talked about, uh, and we didn't uh, minimize those areas. The paint, you know, they scored 16 in the paint. Uh, the fast break points, transition, I think they had 17. Uh, we turned the ball over, which I think fueled some of that. Uh, so then the turnovers. So it's like, you know, th those three areas, I think some of that's controllable. You know, the offensive rebounds to agree, uh, that's controllable, uh, but you can't give up 21 for 36 points. I think you're going to win a game. Uh, this is my first time, you know, first year being around them. Right. So I'm sure it's happened in the past. Um, I will give their defense credit. Uh, you know, I think you always have to when, you know, your best player struggles. But, uh, you know, I think he'll he'll figure it out and he'll work his way through it. You know, it's he's too good of a player uh, on both ends. I think it's, it's temporary. He had a tough night, obviously, but uh, I expect him to bounce back. Well, we, we've been trying to play three bigs, um, and some of that is um, reintegrating two key components from last year. Um, and that dynamic is difficult for a lot of people. It, it's choppy minutes, and you never get really a rhythm. Uh, the decision was made. I, I wanted to see TB with that uh, starting group. We were going to give it a handful of games and see how it goes. I think he's still kind of working his way back. Um, but he was a starter last year on, on a playoff team. so. I think he's uh, he's got the ability, you know, to impact that starting unit, but uh, he just needs a little bit more time, you know, a little more seasoning with the the other four guys on the floor. I'm sorry. Oh, I thought he did well. I mean, we were switching quite a bit, um, and I thought we had a lot of he had a number of good possessions, even on their smalls. But moving his feet, staying in front, defending without fouling. Um, you know, you have a conception of a guy, and then all of a sudden you're around him, you see him. Um, his size and strength, agility, um, all those things are are terrific assets. His ability to, to, to switch, and we can downsize, play him at the five, um, gives us a lot of flexibility with that. All right, we'll go to Zoom. Josh? Wes, how much of your decision to go with the two-man center rotation uh, revolved around uh, Dan, get Daniel Gafford's performance early in the third quarter in the last game? Not, not much at all. Um, this is something we've been talking about, thinking about, um, you know, trying to give TB a chance with those starters. Um, you know, he was always kind of coming in a little later uh, with the second unit. We wanted to see how he responded and how it, how it worked. Um, he had a tough night, but that's not, to me, an indication to overreact. Uh, we'll give it a stretch and, and see how it goes. Hopefully, the, those that five will, will figure it out and get and start to uh, coalesce. But you know, I think it's, it's in fairness, you know, he's out of rhythm and needs to kind of get back into um, those long stretches in the first quarter. It, to to what could Gafford have been a better matchup against? against Adams and Adams' offensive rebounding tonight? Uh, you could argue that. Um, I, I can only speculate. I don't know. Um, it's uh, it's one thing to say, hey, it didn't work. But, uh, you know, if it had, we would say, hey, TB did a terrific job. So um, potentially, yeah, it could have. You know, but it, I think it's a collective thing. Um, not one person, in, you know, alone is going to stop Adams from going to the offensive glass. It's got to be a, uh, a mindset with the other four guys that they have to hunt and hit him. Uh, he's leading the league right now in offensive rebounds. So I think he had 10 tonight. So uh, it's not just on TV. I want to make sure I heard you correctly because it sounds just a little bit low. Did, did I hear you correctly that uh, you plan to go with this grouping for several more games at least? Uh, with, the, with the five, yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. Chase. Wes, uh, apologies if you answered part of this question already, but is the decision with Gafford, is it, is it purely performance-based? And if so, what what could he be doing better? No, I don't think it's purely performance-based. I think this is more about the TB in this instance. 
Um, you know, I think I'm very comfortable with what, what, what Gaff brings. Um, and I'm, I, I got a feel for that. And he, he, he can impact uh, winning a number of ways. Um, I want to see it out of TB. And trying to play the three bigs um, it became very choppy. Uh, I know that the guys didn't like it. I didn't necessarily like it, but we had to kind of get him to a certain threshold before we could say, all right, he can play long stretches. Um, now that we've eclipsed that, he, there, there are still lim uh, minute limitations, but um, you know he's cleared the hurdle to be able to run out there and play. Um, why not start him? And give, it, give it a look with that starting group and see how it goes. And, you know, you mentioned Steven Adams is good at offensive rebounds, but 10 for even him is, is a lot. Um, was it a, a size advantage that you guys couldn't overcome, or is there something you guys could or should do differently to make sure that, you know, it's more of even an average night for him? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's just, once again, it's, it's a mindset. It's not on one guy to do it. Um, you know, that ball gets batted around. Uh, a lot of those are 50-50 balls. We have to find a way to come up with some of those. Um, but I, I don't know schematically if there's any more you can do. Um, it's just more of an effort and a mindset and just something that we got to be aware of. There, there has to be urgency to, to get to it. Kareem. Hey, Wes, um, I'm just curious, you know, what, what was your message at halftime? You know, it, they, they did seem to come out with a lot more juice in that second half. Um, from, from, I guess, from looking from afar? No, well, I, I thought we did. I mean, I made that point after the game. You know, our effort, uh, our energy level, our pace, I thought our physicality um, to, a, to a degree in that third quarter got better. Um, and the message was just, hey, you know, we're, we're down 22. Um, we're on the other other side of it. You know, obviously, we saw it the other night. We, were, we had a team down big, and they crawled their way back into the game and won it. So that, that was kind of like the, the mindset, you know, like, we cut it to 11, you know, so it was, it was within reach, but uh, obviously you couldn't get over the hump. And apologies, it was tough to hear a little earlier if I'm, I'm repeating, but I want to ask about John real quick. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we talked to uh, pregame about, you know, the things that um, ways to slow him down, but is that guy, is that a guy who's just, you know, sometimes, you know, he's, he's, he he's just makes plays outside of what you guys are trying to do, and and it doesn't sometimes it doesn't matter what you throw at him or or did you wish that you were able to do certain things against him that you guys just didn't do? No, I think you know uh, we, we could have done a better job of uh, keeping him out of the paint. Um, some of the pick and rolls we switched. He made tough threes, contested threes. I think four for eight, uh, which is you know above his average. But um, you know in general. You can't just play a guy like that the same way. He's he's too good. He's too dynamic. Um, and, and we saw that, especially in the pick and rolls. Uh, he gets downhill and he's he's crafty with the finishes. You know he's able to read uh, read the roll, and drop off to the big, kick out, get his team teammates involved. So um, we we can do a better job at the point. I think we can do a better job at shrinking the floor and try to throw more bodies at him. Uh, but you know he's a tough cover. Thank you. Josh, did you have another? I did, thank you. Uh, Coach, how do you assess Spencer's play over the last few games? And um, is there anything that, that needs to be done to get him to be a little bit more, to help him be more productive? Well, I mean, it's, it's not just Spencer. I mean, we collectively have struggled. Um, you know, so it's, you know, I think it's a little bit of everybody. Um, he, I think he can, you know, be more aggressive and attack early. Um, and I think uh, he was aggressive in that third quarter, um, which I like. I think he's got to do that and continue to do that. Get downhill. That's where he's at his strength. Um, so we just have to find ways to kind of turn the ball loose, get him going early. But, uh, you know, it's a collective thing where, you know, we're all kind of struggling. We're struggling to make shots, even the ones that we, we generated that were, you know, good looks. Uh, we had 27 assists and 35 field goals. So the ball movement was solid. You know, I, I'm, I was pleased with that, but we missed a ton of, uh, of easy looks. I understand uh, you'll go with the two-man center rotation. Uh, is your intention to go with a nine-man rotation overall in the next couple games? Um, uh, yeah, in general. Um, I think, you know, that that's uh, we'll settle into that. But at this point, anything's on the table. Kyle, what did, what did you – Turn it up. 
Kyle, what did you feel like was the were the biggest differences in this game? I think, um, you know, um, you know, we couldn't stop Ja. Uh, I think he really set the pace for them. He did a great job in pick and roll, and then, you know, what we did uh, with our coverage. You know, he just exploited it left and right. Uh, that dude's um, <clears throat> that dude's a special player. You know, you know, we tried to stay in a drop with him, and um, that didn't work. And then we started switching. And uh, you know, I thought we did a good job, honestly, um, of just being in strength and making show bodies. But uh, you know, he just started shooting over the top. So you know, we can just tip our hat to that. And then you know, having 21, 22 offensive rebounds, uh, you know, that's the game right there. So how does how does playing with a two man set in rotation, no matter who is in it? make things easier or any different for the rest of the people in the playing rotation? I mean, it's a little bit easier. Um, obviously, playing with a two-man center rotation more than three, uh, just for, you know, rhythm and, and continuity purposes. Uh, I think that's the number one thing. So, uh, you know, I think that's just the biggest thing. When you, when you play two-man instead of three, Thank you. Yeah. Chase. Hey, Kuz. Um, Ten of the offensive rebounds came from Steven Adams. I know he's um, a, a big challenge, uh, literally, but what could you guys do differently um, going up against him to try to prevent that from happening? I mean, he's a big boy. I think uh, after the first, um, you know, after the first eight minutes, he had about eight rebounds. So, um, you know, that was tough. And then, you know, in certain situations when you try to put two bodies on them, you know, uh, then somebody else comes in to crash in. So, uh, you know, they, they definitely play hard, harder than us. And, you know, with Steven, Steven Adams, that's what he does. That's what he's done his entire career. Crashing on board, big body, you know, it, it's, it's tough down there. Uh, but, you know, Tip their hat to them. They play hard, harder than us. And, you know, I think the 20 plus offensive rebounds just tells that story of who wanted it more tonight. So. And what do you think led to the slow start offensively for you guys? Uh, 15 points in the first quarter. Um, I mean, probably me I had bad turnovers. Um, and then we just didn't make shots. Uh, you know, on the night, you know, I think we only had about 12 turnovers and that's not bad, but, um, you know, we just didn't make shots, uh, missed a few at the rim. And uh, I, think, I think that was just the biggest part to, you know, starting out slow, so. What did you feel like was behind the, the, the rough start in the, in the first quarter, both on, on both ends of the floor? Um, I mean, not making shots and also uh, their offensive rebounding, I think, um, giving them all them uh, second chance points. So it's hard to uh, have both those things happen. How, how does having a two man center rotation impact, no matter who's in it, uh, impact the rest of the people on the on the floor? Um, I mean, I, I feel like most teams have uh, two centers, I think. Um, obviously, our rotation is ever evolving. Our roles are very fluid. Um, and so to that respect, like we're trying to figure out exactly who we are. How do you how do you feel about your performance in the last couple games? And and do you feel more comfortable um, in the offense now than you did, say, a couple months ago? Uh, no, I mean, I didn't hit shots the last couple of games. Um, I mean, like, like I said, with, with a team that's got peace coming out, coming in, you know, everything evolving, uh, just try to go out there and do what I'm told, um, in whatever spots that I'm in. Thank you. Chase. 
as uh, one of the veteran players on this team, one of the starters, as you take stock of these last like five losses and six out of the last seven, what do you think have been kind of the common problems you guys need to get over? I mean, we're going down big, you know what I mean? And trying to fight to come back. It's not a recipe for, um, you know, winning, you know what I'm saying? Or any level of consistency. It's easy to play when you're down. You know what I mean? Like it's, when you're down 30, yeah, you can play free and do all that other stuff. Cause like, I mean, the team that's the other team naturally puts their or takes their foot off the gas pedal. Like it's, it's fool's gold. Christos. Hey Spencer, hope you're doing well. What kind of shakeup you guys, uh, you, this team needs from your perspective to turn around the season? Accountability. And from from your perspective, and as one of the most uh, experienced guys and as one of the leaders, do you feel uh, responsible to make a step up, be more vocal, or be more uh, step into a bigger uh, lead, uh, be more leader on uh, on and off the floor? Um, off the floor, obviously, yeah. Like you, you want your daily habits to to speak for you. Um, you know, it's a it's an interesting situation. Uh, spoke up a little bit early on. Um, you know, it wasn't uh, necessarily welcomed, uh, and so like like I said, I try to do whatever I'm what's asked of me. Um, at the end of the day, everybody has has a role to play. Um, and it's about being accountable in your role and doing that to the best of your ability. Uh, that's really all I got. Thank you very much. All right, we'll take a couple more. Josh. Uh, Spencer, when you when you cite accountability, where in what areas uh, and who can be more accountable? Um, every single area. So that's that's top down, right? Like everybody makes mistakes. Um, and and I don't just mean players. I'm talking about you know coaches, management, everything. Like we just gotta all like own where we're at as a group, um, own who we are as individuals, go out there and do our job to the best of our abilities, and uh, not worry about the future or what may happen next. Chase, you good? Um. Yeah, I guess just as a follow up to that, do you think it's there's been an issue with people not being accountable or do you think generally just accountability is what the team needs to get out of something like this? Yeah, no, I was talking about generally speaking, like this wasn't me saying like, hey, like Raul Neto is not accountable. That's not what I was saying. I was saying like typically to pull yourself out of a funk in life, right? Like you have to look in the mirror and be like, hey, like I'm in a funk right now. Let me diagnose why I'm in a funk. Let me, you know, do the things that get me out of this funk, right? And when you're playing a team sport, everybody has a role to play. Everybody has a job to do. You know what I mean? Like, we uh, don't need uh, Trez being our best three-point shooter, for example, right? Now, obviously, he doesn't shoot threes, but this is a little bit of hyperbole, but uh, to to not put it anything too direct because I know you guys will write what you write but like that's what I mean right like we just have to go and do our jobs to the best of our abilities and not you know worry about the noise 